Hello, Oz here with hot tip number two from Excel TV. And let's get square on the goal here is to just show you the thought process or one way of working with Excel. We won't go deep into these formulas and the layout and everything. Because what happened is a friend sent this challenge to me that these people are going to rent a condo for 31 days and they're going to rent a truck. All right, and they wanted to know how much each person would have to pay to cover the cost. All right, and the immediate challenge that I saw was they had tried to put a big massive calculation in one cell and that was obviously giving them fits because of all the different variables that they have the people the days the cost um, and then they want to divide the cost by the number of people who were in the condo so if a person was in the condo by themselves for one day that should be a different rate than if three people were in the condo on a date. So I'm thinking, all right, so why don't we just lay this out literally? So here we have all of the people, the days, a calculation of how many people per day, and an X if a person was in the condo on a particular day. All right, so we see here that on the sixth day there were three people, Benji, Tanya, and Raymond. All right, and that just shows us the days, right? But now here's over here where our math is happening, and sometimes we call these uh, helper columns, right? Because these aren't our results, these are intermediate steps toward our results. So we have our condo rate being calculated, the truck, the day total, and then the per person amount. Right, so on this date, $87.10 per person should be paid by these three people. And the total is happening here, right, in this cell. And we have a check, right? This checks to see if our math is right. We have three different ways, and if they're equal to each other, then we have a check mark. So we calculate the condo plus the truck. We calculate the day total to ensure that's equal. and we check what we're saying people owe. So as long as they're all equal, then good. So let's see, so I have a check mark here. So what if I go ahead and say this was, uh, say, $60. Now we have an X. Let's undo that. But those are uh, one good way of ensuring that your math is correct. So now what we can do is go to our conclusion, no, go to our result, and say that, all right, we know Benji, 19 days, owes this amount of money. And let's see, so how do Gene and Benji have the same amount, but Gene was there two days less? Well, she spent, um, Benji spent more time in the condo along with other people. Right? So Jean would have spent 17 days, but there would have been fewer people with her in there. So they had to divide up a bigger chunk. And Tanya pays more. She was in there more days. So there you go. Um, let's see. Let's look at our conclusion. The conclusion is don't always go for the concise, concise excuse me, solution. You can get lost in a lot of parentheses trying to do everything all at once. So we see that there were a lot of steps. 
and we put them all in different areas and it might look like a mess it look, might look confusing but our math is right and get one piece working then move to the next piece then you can put them all together at the other end and just don't be afraid to make a big mess now there's one thing that I did see that was not good okay this was 6,000 so let's make this equal to this okay 6300 this is 1580 alright and we're good thank you um, for checking out Excel TV and send us any questions and be sure to tune in every Tuesday night. Thanks a lot.